This meeting is called to order. Um, Secretary Fernanda Sanchez, could you please do roll call? We'll now begin roll call. Sarah Clendenning. Oh. Ben Wadsworth. Present. Fernanda Sanchez here. Uh, Vincent Chente. Here. Nancy Soto. Here. William Morrison. Benny Madera. Here. Didier DeLizer. Here. Diana Tran. Here. Richard Larson. Here. Annalie Har. Annalie Har. Three. Melanie Shiflet. Here. Vincent Gonzalez. Vicente Gonzalez Reyes present. Vicente Gonzalez, my mistake. Armida Marrufo. Victor Asanedo. Uh, here, present. Diego Zapata. Yeah. Gil Arevalo. Here. Richard Ortiz. Here. Steve Lucero. Here. Lina Ruiz. Leah. Here. Here, 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 here. Thank you. Selena Ortega gave notice. And that concludes roll call. Thank you very much, Secretary Sanchez. Um, today is, for the record, Thursday, August 5th, 2021. It is now 6.07 p.m. Um, we are, okay, so this meeting, we're running it according to EBG protocols for COVID. Just so everybody knows, there are three people who may be more prominent in this meeting. One is me, uh, President, um, the host, and then Fernanda Sanchez is the moderator. Secretary Sanchez, and then um, Vince Montalvo, our treasurer, is uh, the man behind the controls running the Zoom. Um, I want to make everybody, uh, what is it? Uh, what a code of conduct. Yeah, code of conduct. Just so everybody knows, there are rules that apply to these meetings. Um, when you uh, address the, for the public and for board members, you, you have to address uh, the members of the board as a whole unit and not just one member. Um, and no personal attacks on race, race religion, um, sexual preference, ethnicity, anything. Um, you will be uh, warned and then removed from the meeting. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, anything else? Non-agenda public comments. We're going to open it up to public comments, two minutes per person. If there's anybody from the public who wants to comment, on anything that's not on the agenda, <clears throat> press uh, star nine on your phone or raise your hand right now. We have two hands up. Adriana, you may speak, you have one minute. Uh, thank you, Lincoln Heights leadership. I'm Adriana Dela Cruz, it's a pleasure to meet you all. I think I spoke last year when I was outreach chair for the Congress, but here's that time of the year again, September 25th, Saturday, starting at 8 a.m. It's going to be a fun, wonderful day. If you haven't got your email invite, I'll make sure to forward it along to the board. I hope you enjoyed last year's uh, workshops. We got a, a really awesome, ambitious lineup this year. There's about 30 workshops that are concurrent, as many as five to six Zoom rooms at the same time of your choice. This year, I'm, I'm pleased to usher in a Spanish uh, language workshop, which will be held entirely in Espanol, para los que hablan en Espanol. Este workshop is para ti, por favor atiende. Please register, it's gonna be on the Eventbrite. I'll be sending you that information. It's a pleasure always to be here at your meetings. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Next, we have Lois David. Yes. Good afternoon. So my name is Luis David. I uh, live on North Main Street. And uh, I wanted to address the littering problem that I've been noticing increasingly in the past weeks or months. And I spoke to the previous meeting the other day and I was told that 
this would be a better place to express my concern, which I'm doing. And um, one thing I want to uh, express is that the other day when I spoke, uh, somehow my words got interpreted as I was speaking um, about the train tracks. And I am not. Uh, the train tracks are obviously one problem because there's a, a lot of people living by the train tracks, but I'm just speaking about Lincoln Heights in general and the fact that a lot of people um, put their trash and uh, discarded objects directly on the sidewalk and they remain there for weeks. And that is my point. Thank you. And uh, uh, comment, but, uh, we, uh, Victor Azanado, area three rep. Um, what yes. You, your go-to person, I believe for that area. I, for a direct contact. Um, so, Victor, what's your email that he can email you at? at, at? Uh, it's Victor Azanedo dot LHNC at gmail dot com. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any more public callers? <clears throat> No more public comments. Okay, uh, now we're gonna open it up to uh, community and board announcements, two minutes per person. Uh, we'll do a community announcements first. Is there anybody from the community with an announcement? Um, please raise your hand or press star nine. Okay. From the public one. Okay, so we're just looking for the public community ones right now. Anything we have you? one, uh, David Galvez. Okay. Hi, David. Hi there, President Kalindeni. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, David Galvez here representing USC Community and Local Government Partnerships with just a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank those board members who um, distributed the backpack giveaway flyer that we uh, mentioned at the last meeting, we were able to distribute um, food and backpack and school supplies to roughly 2,700 Lincoln Heights residents as well as residents from the surrounding area. This included uh, 1,580 backpacks and uh, it was a great event. We're gonna host another one in the fall. Secondly, with school starting up soon, uh, we'd love to come back and talk to you about a program that we offer at Lincoln High School in which currently there are 74 Lincoln High School students who are on track, on track to graduate over the next two or three years and then uh, receive a scholarship into USC in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming years. Um, secondly, with the rise of, of COVID and the Delta variant, um, we've been partnering with a number of organizations to host Ask a Doctor events. Uh, we're having one this afternoon or this evening rather from four to 5.30. Um, if your council is interested in doing one in the future, either focused on the Lincoln Heights community we can do it uh, bilingually. We can also in, in talk to our faculty about including a Mandarin component. Um, these are events that we host regularly. We'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we, we're still involved in the Higher LA Youth Program. We have about 110 youth from South LA and from uh, Northeast LA and the East Side uh, who are working at USC over the summer um, and uh, getting uh, great job skills. And lastly, I know someone mentioned uh, trash along uh, Valley and along the train tracks. Uh, we work real closely with the city um, to help clean up the litter that accumulates along the train tracks and along Valley. And we're working with our street medicine program to provide services to the unhoused who live in some of the RVs along Valley. Uh, we'd love to connect with the area representative and others on, the, on, on your council to talk about some of the work that we're doing and some possible partnership opportunities. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Any more public announcements? Yeah, I had my hand up. Oh, we're, gonna get to we're still going um, to the public. Please wait for your turn. Okay. Any attendees? No? Okay, so now we'll go to uh, board announcements. Any board members have an announcement? We have yes, two. Yes, I have, I have one. Richard, can you please wait to be recognized before speaking? Thank you. Richard, you have to be recognized by the chair, actually, or everybody to. Bernie. Okay, so uh, we have two hands up Richard Larson and Diana Tran. Okay, uh, Diana, what's the thing? All right, uh, so I have two announcements. 
uh, school's opening up again soon. Uh, so the 16th is when uh, most of the schools are going to be opening up. And uh, I actually have like a, uh, I actually would like for uh, Rich, uh, um, David Galavis to reach out to me again so I can like spread the message if he's still here. Because like he has my email. If not, I'll just email him. Uh, those, those are the two announcements that I had. Thank you. We actually have another public um, attendee. So we're going to jump back to that. Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, letting me to speak. I am a member of the Echo Park Neighborhood Council, but more importantly, I am the vice chair of the LGBTQ plus Alliance of Los Angeles Neighborhood Councils. And I wanted to let you all know that our next general meeting is on Wednesday, August 18th at 7 p.m. And uh, we'd love to get on your schedule to present to you about our, uh, what the Alliance does and uh, how to help you all recognize how to be more, if you're not already, but everybody can improve more welcoming of the queers who may be on your board, but are most certainly in your community. Um, but to get an idea of what we do, please, if you can, it's 18th of August, 7 p.m. And we hope to see as many of you there as possible. Okay. Lauren, if, Lauren you. if you have a, um, a flyer or any sort of invite, uh, you can email it to, to me. I can barely hear you, but. Sorry, sorry. Uh, if you have a flyer or any printed material, supplementary document, uh, could you please send it to me or to? Anybody? I will, because we do have, I'll have our outreach person do it. Um, thank you, sir. I will follow up on that. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Any more uh, public comments? No? We have three board members. Okay, so uh, we'll go to Richard next. Hi, thank you. So about an hour ago, the uh, we might have, some of us might have seen that uh, the controversial um, artesian night market, Avenue 26 tacos that had various in, incarnations over the years has been shut down, the streets has been blocked off after a very heated uh, series of emails sent out by the community here in Area 1. Uh, I've been very much fo following this very closely and supported the residents in trying to see what the solutions may be and eventually it was an overwhelming number of people who were businesses and local residents who were getting locked in their properties, being blocked by cars, and it was seen that the uh, ticket giving was just the cost of doing business. So finally, the councilman stepped up, and this morning the, sheet, the, the street was shut down, and uh, I thought, uh, I, think, I think that was the, the move in the right direction. There was a loss of income, but uh, the general consensus around here in, in Area 1 was that it was uh, unhelpful to this part of the community and caused a lot of uh, traffic, trash, and other health-related concerns. Uh, so that's the latest update on that. Thank you. And for the record, no, um, Richard, uh, you, there's been no press release from CD1, correct? I'm sorry, what? Has there been a press release from CD1 announcing uh, Yes, uh, a letter, uh, the councilman did put out a letter via his uh, deputy district director, and he, his comments are in that um, that announcement. And I think it's in the press. I've seen it in the press uh, within the last hour uh, as well. We're still waiting for an official <clears throat> official announcement. Um, but thank you. All right. And so, um, any other board announcements? We have two more. Victor, you may speak. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I, I just wanted to bring it up to the board. Um, I'm not sure if there's something that we can do. I know other neighborhoods um, have volunteers to do street cleanups. I'm not sure if that's something we can form with the council or if it has to be with the community members itself, but um, I would like to start something like that for Lincoln Heights. I know there's one in Boyle Heights that's very popular online and then uh, I believe there's one also in Lincoln Heights, but I, I haven't been able to get in contact with them. But if it's something that we can do as a council, that'll be great. Um, especially like uh, the gentleman mentioned about the um, 
the street on Valley uh, being clean. That's one of the focuses we would do. Probably have uh, community members present us with um, locations or pictures that need to be addressed. Um, I know that the street services should be in charge of that and take care of that, but I know a lot of times it takes a while um, and during that time it piles up. So that's something that uh, since we're all living here that we can focus on it. Um, so that's just an idea of mine. Thank you. And lastly, we have Annalie, you may speak. Uh, yeah, I wanted to touch on uh, what Richard had said. So um, outreach is uh, due to this closure. Uh, well, we're all already going to do it. And then um, and then now, you know, the Avenue 26 is closed down. So we're going to be um, motioning for a town hall on the next XCOM to put uh a town hall for Avenue 26 on the agenda. That is kind of uh, what's been happening there. And then um, uh, Victor, yes, uh, 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 that, that's it. Yeah, anyways, I'll be in contact with. Thank you. And that's it. All right, so those are all of our important. Oh, we have one more hand. We have Benny, Benny, his hand. Yeah, Benny. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, just uh, I've seen uh, one of our grants, uh, our uh, the purchase for the the portable water tank for the Lincoln High School student athletes. I've it's already been purchased, and I'm already seeing it be utilized by the student athletes there. So, just wanted to say that it's good to see you know uh, concrete examples of uh, of our funds. Uh, being utilized. So I just wanted to share that, that I saw that um, recently. And uh, yeah, I also know that there, if anyone's looking to play, uh, you know, football for Lincoln High School, I'm sure they would welcome you. So uh, just wanted to put that out there for those folks that are interested. Um, it's, it's not too late to join. Is there an age limit? Well, it would be for the high school team. So you. yeah, you would have to be high school age and en enrolled at, at Lincoln uh, to you. play, sure. All right. Oh, we have some more hands up. We actually have two more hands up. Uh, Gilbert, you may speak. Gil Arvala. Uh, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to answer the other board member regarding uh, cleanups. Uh, that has been uh, the history of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council for all, all years and years and years. We do cleanups. Actually, we like to do them by area. Uh, one of the reasons I like to, uh, would like to be done with, with areas is that uh, it gets the area rep and uh, at large uh, to uh, schedule a cleanup and it gives them an opportunity to meet the neighbors yeah, in his area and uh, uh, you know outreach and everything else is involved in uh, doing a cleanup per, per area. So that's uh, one of the things that all area residents should consider. Thank you. Steven, you may speak. Hey, thanks. Yeah, Benny, uh, questions for Benny when the schedule of the games might be to see him. Just curious. Yeah, I, I can share I can share the schedule. Um, it's basically going to be Friday nights for the most part. I believe the first game will be towards the end of the month. But um, yeah, I, I can provide that information. Okay. Yeah, Benny can email it to the board. Sure. All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, okay, we have oh, a new member has joined. Armida is now, for the record, Fernanda, can you mark that Armida has joined the meeting now? <clears throat> no. All right. So, uh, Armida, you may speak. I'm sorry, what? You may speak. 
Okay, thank you. Um, this is regarding the comment that I made at the last meeting um, regarding that letter that was sent. Um, I think I have a copy of it. It was from the LA Ethics to uh, Lincoln Star, city attorney, city clerk and Dunn, accusing me of using a pen name and all other stuff that is not true. Um, does anybody from the LA Ethics or Intel wish to share how that letter came about? Because that says... Armida, all, all comments must be addressed to the entire board. I'm sorry, what? All comments or all announcements must be addressed to the entire board. It is to the board. Okay. Any, any responses? No? Okay, do you have any other public announcements? Sarah, the board can't respond to it because the Brown Act doesn't allow us to respond during the uh, announcement. It is announcements of period. Okay, so that was the announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And that's it. At the last time I asked, I requested if somebody was going to clarify that because this was posted by somebody from the Intel and it entails everybody who uh, is for part of the group of the Intel accusing me of such a thing. That that was clearly said in the last meeting. Thank you, Ms. Marufo. Um, okay, so, so uh, that needs you're out of line. Okay, so any- That needs to be addressed. If you continue, I've warned you once. Thank you. Okay, and this is a warning also be- Okay, any other board member comments? Our announcement, no? Okay. Sarah, we can barely hear you. Any other board member announcements? I wonder why it's so quiet. I'll just be close up here. Okay, so no more board member announcements. No more community announcements. All right. It might be the the there might be the volume of your mic. I don't have a mic. I just have a, a computer I'm talking into. Is it super quiet? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I'll just yell. Okay, so. Uh, Next, we're going to move on to the new agenda items. A, vacant seats, announcement of open LHNC positions as of August 5th, 2021. Business representative, community-based organization representative, area four resident representative, and area seven re resident representative. So, um, those are four uh, vacancies, vacant seats. Um, on our website, there's a button that you can just click and it says what I just said. Or if you want to apply or you wish to get a, yeah, if you want an application, um, just email our secretary, Fernanda Sanchez, uh, fernanda.sanchez, lhnc at gmail.com. Um, and then also we have supporting documents on our website for today's agenda which have uh, maps and the boundary maps and the roles and responsibilities of those positions. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so item B, appointment of seven LHNC board members for Civic U, uh, brought to us by Empower LA. Civic U. Uh, Civic U provides the tools neighborhood councils need to understand city government and to influence public or to influence policy at city hall. Um, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment in partnership with the mayor's office and Cal State LA's Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs invites each neighborhood council to appoint board members to attend Civic U. The number of appointees from each board will need to be less than the majority of the quorum for your board. So that means less than 14. Um, we invite your board to take gender diversity and inclusiveness in its decisions. All right. And so there will be three 90 minute sessions. Uh, one is September 9th, 2021. It's called Power Structure at Los Angeles City Hall. The second session is Thursday, September 23rd, 6 30 p.m. The Guts of City Government. And then the next, uh, the final one is Thursday, September 30th, 2021, Mobilizing for Influence. So those are the three different classes. 
And so uh, right now we're going to, or I'm going to appoint board members, not, I guess it's, uh, yes, yeah, seven or more. Um, yeah, so appoint board members to attend this. Um, but I see who wants to be part of it, right? So yeah. uh, we'll motion, uh, I guess I'm not motioning anything. Um, no, not yet. Let's let's do the appointments first, and then we'll do the motion. Okay, so um, if you are a board member and you're interested in taking part in the Civic U uh, th trilogy of classes, which are held in September, uh, please raise your hand, and uh, Secretary Sanchez will take note of it right now. Okay, we'll let people click those little hands. So far, I have Gil. Steve, myself, Benny, Chente, Sarah, Diego, <laughs> and we're already at six. Well, we have, a, it says the, uh, actually like on the email that we just received, it was after uh, the agenda was written, it was received from Empower LA. It says the number of appointees needs to be less than the majority of the quorum for your board yeah which is going to be seven it's seven okay. or less okay so seven or less sorry so uh we have one more so we have one more um nancy is so sarah, the next, next oh. one on my screen okay, so I'll just, uh, yeah sarah uh, I, I just want to recommend this i think sarah because as, as the president you can pick out the seven to represent lincoln heights neighborhood council since there's more than seven that want to attend. I'll, I'll relinquish my seat to somebody else because uh, maybe I'll just uh, spy on the program. <laughs> Whatever. I'll take I'll my move, hand I'll lower your hand. To somebody else. Okay, so, um, gosh, okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two. This is really hard. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so Fernanda, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nancy, yes. Um. Lena, yes. Uh, Lena? Yeah, Lena Ruiz. Uh huh. That we're at four. Okay. Um, I'm looking at my little hands. Did I say Nancy already? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Benny? Five. Yes. What am I? So, so yeah. We, uh, uh, Two more. Gil Aravalo. Six. And then, uh, who else is on here? Bernie, Gil, Benny, Vince. We have remaining Steve, Diego, Annalie, Armida. Oh, okay. Um, I'll say Steve. At seven. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Okay. So, does anybody want a motion? So, I'll motion. I'll motion to uh, if um, if Fernanda can just read the names of the seven appointees after the motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept. Say the names, Fernie. Gil, Steve, myself, Benny, Chente, Nancy, Lena. For the uh, the seven appointed to the Civic U program, do I have a second? Second. Ben Wadsworth seconds the motion. So board comment and then public comment and then we vote. So any board member comment? You have a, you can raise your hand. Have some hands up here. Okay, so we have no board member comment. Oh, okay. we have one. Diana, can they share with us what they learned? Uh, I would assume yes. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so many people want to go. I, I just figure, you know, like, hey, give us some of the, the, the sauce, too. Yeah, I mean, I want to know. <laughs> um, Maybe what we can do is encourage the seven members to at least write a small report back so we can report back to the board on some of the things that we learned. Some of the highlights of the three courses from seven different opinions, right? Yeah, I think that's great. I like the topics, the guts of City Hall or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so any more board member comments, or discussion? Any public comments? I don't see any. Nope. Okay, so um, we have a first from Vince, a second from uh, Ben Wadsworth. So uh, we're gonna take it for a vote. Uh, because this is not a funding item, we could just simply say those in favor, aye, those opposed, nay. We can go through it fast. Okay, so those in favor, I say aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. The motion carries. We have seven uh, Pacific U reps. Uh, Sarah, for, for the record, just ask for the names. Okay, ask for the names later. No, for the nay, the nay. We got the yays, okay. but we didn't get the oh, nays. The nays. <laughs> I can go through the names real fast. Any nays? Okay, if you guys want to do roll call, we can do the roll call vote to make it easier. All right, this will be quick. Sarah? Yay. Ben? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Chentia? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Diana? Yeah. Richard Larson's not on here anymore. Annalie? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Vicente? Yes. Armida? No. Victor? Yes. Diego? Yes. Richard? Yes. Steve? Okay. Lena? Yes. Lydia? Yes. That's 16 yes, one no. Okay, so the ayes have it. Motion carries. We have seven appointees. Noted. Okay. Um, C, discussion and possible action on funding for the Congress of Neighborhood Councils. So that, uh, I think the caller, um, Adriana, called in the beginning. She said it will be September 25th at 9 a.m. Uh, I have the supporting document on our website, lincolnheightsnc.org. Uh, so this is, Vince, can you describe it? Congress of Neighborhood Councils. Uh, I'll just read this. Uh, 2021, leading change together. Uh, it's an event. They're seeking funding for this event from the neighborhood councils. Um, the letter from uh, Richard Larson is on our website. Um, Vince, can you just briefly describe what happens at this event? So the Congress is responsible for putting things on like Civic U. And some of the funding is used towards that back at, like back when we were meeting before post COVID, um, they would usually have it in city hall and they would cater out both a lunch and a dinner. Uh, this year, there's not really much that they're doing. You know, it's gonna be all online, uh, but I know that they're still requesting money from other neighborhood councils to support it. It doesn't have a budget of its own. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's what the document's about. Okay. So um, we don't have, this is a funding item, correct Vince? The request for funds? It is in our, in our, in, in the agenda, whenever we have a funding item, we need to have an amount and we need to use the wording funding up to. Okay. So is there a specific amount that they're requesting? Yeah, so the email was from Richard. Um, let me just pull it up really quick. Richard's no longer here, uh, but I will pull up the, the, the email. I think it was a couple, one to 3,000, but one second. One minute, please. Mm, here it is. Okay. Uh, it says the request can, yeah, so the letter is attached. The request can be accomplished directly with the city clerk funding portal. It is not an MPG. I would appreciate it if we could support this great effort. Some of the NCs have given 3,000 and more, but I am suggesting $1,000 for this event. Thank you for your support. So one of the things that I wanna check on the, the funding item, because I know Richard's part of the, uh, the uh, committee, um, we have to go through some, we have to go through the city attorney 
and through uh, city funding to see how to deal with it because he's on the board. I know they're not a 501c3. Okay. But I, I, I've, spoken, I've already spoke, spoken to the city attorney about the conflict of interest. They said that it's okay for the okay. board to request the money. I think I spoke about a month ago. So then I'll, I'll prepare it at this at this point because it it's, doesn't have the funding amount on the agenda right now. We can't vote on it, oh. but we can make the recommendation for next month and see if we can get the funding then, or we can also hold a special meeting for it. Well, the, it won't be next month. The next meeting would be on August nineteenth, uh, I believe. August nineteenth. Okay, we might have, if we're if we're considering to fund this, we might have to take we might have to have a special uh, meeting. To, re to review it and get the funding. The wording on it right now won't won't pass it, uh, Brown Act. Okay, okay. Because it doesn't have the funding up to, just as an example, it would have been uh, funding up to $3,000. And let's say the board decided to vote just for a thousand, we would be legally covered under the Brown Act with that. We can always go down, but not up on a request. Okay, I think because the letter didn't indicate an amount, I mean, this actual, the document, I, uh, I I did not include the amount that was actually requested in the email um, because it seems like an aside to the letter. Mm -hmm. now I'm seeing that it was indicating the amount desired. Okay, well then we'll just uh, table this item or we'll... I think Diego had a question about it. Okay, so uh, one second, we can do the board comments, right? Yeah, we can do some a uh, board questioning, but we can't take action on it. Okay, so uh, we'll go to board member comments right now. Diego, thank you, Vincent. Thank you, sir. So, yeah, my only question is also just because we have such a limited amount of funding to, you know, distribute for NPGs. I really want to make sure that this money goes towards a good cause, at least to support our community. So, I, I would invite Richard or, or or Adriana or anyone on the Congress to, to talk about how the money will be spent given that it is an online event. Um, what, 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 what do you need the money for? Is it a make or break thing if, if we don't give you this fine money? I'd, I'd like to know that. That's valuable information to vote. Thank you, Diego. Diego. Uh, Victor? Oh yeah, my comment was only um, if we can share screen like the, the agenda for like the public and the board or any other documents that come in, in the future. Um, just so that people know what we're talking about, I guess. I don't know if that's just an idea. It's a great idea, thank you. No, yeah, we can do that. We've done it in the, in the past right now. Um, I just don't have it because I'm not at home to do them, but we'll definitely put them up in the future again. And and just for the, the public, you can still look for the documents ahead of time. They're put within either 72 hours or 24 hours before the meeting. But we will definitely make that effort to put them up during the meeting. Yeah, you just go, you could go right now to lincolnheightsnc.org, click on agendas and then today. And then when you click on agenda, it'll just show the supporting documents. Um, sorry, yeah, Vince is in the desert. Um, <laughs> on a horse with no name. Uh, any more board member comments on that? Uh, we got Benny. Okay. Benny? Uh, just that it'd be good to know also what other neighborhood councils are contributing, because I know there's over 90 neighborhood councils. So that'd, that'd be a good piece of information if we can find out who's who else is giving what. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll try to look into that and see what other people have donated and I'll try to get an email out to everybody. Um, Deanna. Uh, hi, so uh, I don't know if it's their turn to talk yet, but there's a um, attendee who has their hand raised. It's not their turn to talk yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. It'll be it'll be next. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilbert? Yes, uh, <clears throat> I've been to several of these uh, uh, congresses. They're, they're very good. Uh, however, they the, the funds for it was a, a, a point that was brought up uh, during budget. Uh, the general manager wanted to take the money that was in a special fund. The money is put in a special fund and the general manager wanted to take that money. Apparently there is a, a good amount of money, even more than uh, what is uh, usually to, uh, to conduct a, uh, in, in, you know, a regular 
Congress, not a not a Zoom Congress. So uh, they're just looking for money uh, to support their uh, uh, their efforts. So obviously, one of these days it's going to be open again. But it is a good thing. But they have they have sufficient money, I know, for to do their uh, their uh, Congress this year. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, we don't have any more board member comments, Sarah, but we do have a public comment. Okay, so we'll go to public comments. Daniel Perez. Please state your name for the record when you're unmuted. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Great. Thanks, everyone. My name is Daniel Perez. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the uh, treasurer for the Delray and Central Hollywood Neighborhood Councils, but I'm actually here as the chair of the Congress Planning Committee. So Richard asked me to stop by and answer any questions y'all might have about the Congress of Neighborhoods. Um, I uh, heard y'all say that this is something that might be tabled to a future agenda, which is totally cool um, because as some of y'all have mentioned, this year's Congress is going to be online on September 25th. So our costs are minimal, but as Gilbert was apt in mentioning, our funds are uh, have been depleted and the general manager has not uh, provided their annual contribution to our funds. So the fundraising we're doing this year is to prepare for our next in-person Congress in fingers crossed 2022. We have about $13,000 in our account currently, and we need to get that up to about $40,000 to have an in-person event. The other neighborhood councils that have contributed so far in 2021 are Candu, North Regist, Palms, Greater Wilshire, Rampart Village, South Robertson, North Hills West, West Los Angeles Sawtell, Central Hollywood, Bel Air Beverly Crest, Tarzana, Sunland Tahunga, Glassell Park, Echo Park, Westlake South, Eagle Rock, Encino, Porter Ranch, and Pico Union. And those amounts have ranged from $250 to $4,000. Um, for those who haven't attended before, the Congress is the one event that the neighborhood council's leaders have to get together for networking, workshops, speakers, et cetera. And although we're bummed that we're gonna be online again this year, we are excited for about 30 different workshops that are gonna be announced on our website pretty soon. Everything ranging from outreach to budget issues, to bylaws, to um, fighting with Dunn. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, there's going to be a lot of different things on the agenda. So six different workshop sessions, a virtual exhibitor fair, uh, opening and closing session. We have a lot planned and are really excited to, to have you all. So I'm happy to answer any other questions y'all may have, but just here to be a resource to y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sarah, we can close this one and then we'll figure out if we put it on an agenda or have a special meeting with it and then notify all the parties. All right. Okay, so we'll move on to item D, discussion and possible action on letter community impact statement to LA City Planning Commission regarding downtown LA community plan, CPC 2017-432-CPU. Um, now this is a, a supplementary document on our website, uh, lakenheightsnc.org, but uh, this was a letter, it's a sign on letter. Um, standing with Central City United Coalition and advocating for a plan, the downtown community plan that maximizes equity and racial justice in the, in the growth of downtown. Um, this plan must center and prioritize the needs of low income tenants, unhoused residents, immigrants, low wage workers, low income entrepreneurs and other vulnerable residents. Um, so the whole document's right here, I, I could read it. Yeah, downtown Los Angeles is home to the city's oldest neighborhoods and has seen over a century's worth of transformation with more changes yet to come. However, historically downtown has been the site of racist and discriminatory land use practices. For example, Chinatown, Little Tokyo and Skid Row were originally created to specifically segregate low-income immigrant and houseless residents from the rest of the city. In more recent years, much has been made of the revitalization or resurgence of downtown, but in too many instances, the policies and practices driving this resurgence have caused more harm than benefit to low income downtown residents, including increased criminalization of unhoused residents and gentrification fueled displacement and destabilization of low income and immigrant communities. Um, so this is a sign on letter. Uh, we support CCU's recommendations for the plan 
and ask the commission to take the following actions to advance a more inclusive and equitable community plan. One, adopt the planning department's careful calibration of base and bonus floor area ratios, FAR, in order to maximize value capture, oh, in order to maximize Val maximize value, capture and promote inclusive affordable housing growth in Chinatown and Little Tokyo. I'm missing comments. Um, let's see. Uh, two, adopt policies and programs to advance equitable access to parks and open space. Um, I wish I could put this on the screen. Three, adopt strong protections and opportunities for community serving small businesses and micro entrepreneurs. Four, include residents with lived experience in the oversight and implementation of the Community Benefits Fund. Expand the, what is that, IXI, IX191 district to create new housing and prevent displacement in Skid Row. Zoning. Eliminate in lieu fees and moderate and above moderate income incentives in order to ensure that new development includes on site affordable housing available to lower income households. Seven, require affordable housing in the downtown adaptive reuse pro program consistent with a citywide adaptive reuse program. Eight, incorporate stronger affordable housing preservation and anti-displacement measures. Um, so this letter so far has been signed by SIACA, uh, Southeast Asian Community Alliance, uh, Little Tokyo Service Center, LA CAN, um, Public Council, Alliance for Community Transit, Los Angeles, the Asian Pacific Islander Forward Movement, Center for the Pacific Asian Family, uh, Community Power Collective, East LA Community Corporation, Eastside Leeds, Esperanza Community Housing Corp, Inclusive Action for the City, J-Town Action and Solidarity, Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, Koreatown Immigrant Workers Alliance, Koreatown Youth and Community Center, Kunki Design Initiative, Little Tokyo Historical Society, Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy and the Los Angeles Neighborhood Land Trust. Um, yeah, so if you, any, am I, are you there? Okay, so if any board members can pull, you know, or you're supposed to read, read this document. <laughs> um, any uh, board member comments? What we gotta do first is uh, I'll make the motion to to accept the the letter as written is there a second i second okay diego seconds so now board board member comment uh diego <laughs> thank you sorry it's okay it's okay so i'm in the desert no. <laughs> i know i know no, no worries so uh i really just want to emphasize that this is uh, a community plan made by the people for the people. Uh, if you haven't read it, it pretty much enumerates a lot of the demands that of an incredibly diverse downtown neighborhood area needs, particularly for their unhoused community and for uh, individuals who are at, at risk for displacement. And um, it it was a it, it took it it, it took quite an amount of time. Uh, and I only know this because I have a few colleagues who, who are part of these organizations that partake in the active organization of all this work. But I really do foresee this as being an important step for us to show solidarity for these communities because they're also adjacent to us. Uh, we're talking about Chinatown, Little Tokyo. This is only a few miles away. And we have the responsibility as a council to support self-determination in these communities. And um, yeah, th this is also very timely because the City Planning Commission is gonna hear this plan. Uh, they're rezoning the downtown plan um, and they're hearing this August 26. So it's really pertinent that we at least, you know, make a motion to approve or disapprove of this uh, th th for this meeting. Otherwise, any sort of action we take will really be after the fact that they've already navigated this plan. So, yeah. Just wanted to share that. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Diego. Does anybody, any other board member have a comment? Okay, I'm, oh, hold on. Uh, Benny. Yeah, I, I was looking at the second page of organizations that support it. And 
One thing I noticed uh, is there's no neighborhood councils on here, which I don't know if they're getting this letter at the same time we are perhaps. Perhaps why that's why I don't see no neighborhood councils. But the other one I, organization I found interesting is towards the bottom is we the unhoused. So apparently there's an organization of homeless folks, oh, I uh, which is pretty uh, noteworthy, I thought. Sorry, I missed the, the last page, but yeah, we need the house. That's a, what's his name? It's a, it's a, it's a good one. Yeah, and then, those are all great. Um, you done, Benny? I just want to make sure I don't want to cut you off. Uh, yes, I mean, if someone can elaborate on, on especially we the unhoused, I mean, anytime uh, we can hear from the homeless folks since they're many times, you know, not, not given a, a platform. Someone can elaborate. That'd be great on on either this organization, we the unhoused, or or maybe some of the other ones. I, I don't see. I don't think any of them are here. But I think in the future, in our land use, we should be able to invite, you know, the organizations here that don't have those platforms. And in a radical matter of Lincoln Heights, we might want to consider even adding a space on for the homeless and our. Uh, uh, planning and land use yeah. so that we do give them the platform and we do change that model yeah, and so that they would be inclusive. The name but, of um, We the Unhoused is Theodore Henderson. Um, he, he's a Chinatown resident in downtown. Theodore Henderson, yeah. Um, I would like to invite him to the next meeting. Too. Um, we got one more for, oh, Sarah. No, you're, so, Diego raised his hand again. I think he has a comment in there. Diego? Sorry to, to double to double comment here, um, but I just wanted to tell Benny, I'm not too familiar with the We Then House because uh, uh, unfortunately I don't have the capacity to do much organizing uh, in the downtown front. But I do know I've been to actually went to several of the meetings uh, in regards to their development of the community plan. And I can honestly personally attest to the fact that an overwhelming amount of unhoused community members, particularly from Skid Row, showed up to the meetings they made their voices heard and a lot of their demands are in this plan. Uh, it, it, it was really inspiring and kind of impactful in a, because, you know, we're, we're so used to our unhoused communities being disenfranchised and for them to have a platform to speak and have some self-determination, it was just, I think it's something that we all need to elevate in every neighborhood. But um, I can uh, ask, for, uh, about We the Unhoused, Benny, and get back to you if you want more information on how to get involved. Oh, no, that, that's fine. Thank you. That was helpful, Diego. Also, um, for a background primer on a lot of this, uh, I had uh, made this document, the uh, formation, um, the formation committee, the, the form Lincoln Heights formation, neighborhood council formation hearings, like 2002, when they initially made the councils and broke up the historic neighborhoods of Little Tokyo and Delano Canyon, Chinatown, William Mead. Um, those same people are still involved in the struggle. You know, like the, there's the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. You know, that's a lot of the people involved in this letter. Um, but if you could find that uh, document that I sent, um, and I'll also put that on the next agenda too as a supporting document, but it's really amazing. 2002, it's the transcript. It's, uh, if you don't read it, you don't understand what's going on in the city, period. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, it's, I think it's, it's good to encourage a lot of the board members to focus on the housing elements that are coming out. You know, I often tell, I often talk to people on the housing issues that we're seeing now, including, you know, uh, grassroots organizations and nonprofits. And some of the things that we do have to focus on too, even though the, the, what we're dealing with now is the planning of it, but it's actually the governing um, principle, right? Which is in our charter, how our agencies are made up, they're rooted in racism. And we were recently, we had a commissioner, Helen Lung, who came out and just reinforced that. And I think that's important for a lot of us to understand that sometimes these policies, while we participate in the creations of them, they are designed to fail for the poor. And so at some point in time, maybe in, in our land use in the near future, 
we can create a document that will look into the city charter to make really, I think we're forming changes or at least give them examples of changes on policy so that these policies that we come up with and design can actually be implemented. Because as we all know, we're, we're not in this mess because we don't have the smartest people here uh, planning. It's not the planners, right? The developers are the ones that are planning our city and then we're gonna reap all the problems that come from it. So. I think that's something to take up, but definitely support the letter. And um, yeah, I, I think it's great. Okay. Okay, we have our last one from Diana Tran. She just raised Hi, uh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Sarah, can, uh, is, is it possible for you to forward them the document that you were talking about to like everybody on this board or like just me, because I'm pretty interested in it. Because I think it'd be, it'd definitely be something really interesting to look into and to read. Oh, the formation document? Yeah, I don't know. Everybody. Wait, where? Um, I'm not sure the specific date, but it may have been right before you were elected. But I'll oh. shoot it over to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just wanted sure, that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's kind of long, but it's really amazing. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Diane. There's no more. I got time. There's no more. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to cut. There's no more board member comments, so we can go to the public. Okay. If there's anybody in the public that wishes to make a comment, you can do so by pushing star nine or raising your hand. I don't see none, Sarah. Okay, so then uh, would it, so we have a, would anybody like we, to motion? To a, it's already been motioned. Vote. We're ready for the vote. Second. <laughs> Wait, one more time just for the record so I can write this down. Uh, so Vince motion and who seconded it? Um, Diana. Diana. Me, Diana. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we'll take it to a vote now. Fernie. Sarah. Uh, yes to approve the letter. Ben. Yes. Myself. Yes. Chente. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Benny. Yes. Diana. Yes. Anna Lee? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Vicente? Yes. Armida? No. Victor? Uh, yes. Diego? Yes. Richard Ortiz? C. Si. Steve? Yes. Lena? Yes. Ndidia? Yes. 17 yes, one no. Okay. 17 yeses, one no. The motion carries. <clears throat> the letter has been approved. Okay, so um, now we move to item number, item letter, item E. Discussion and possible action on USC entitlements for new Hyatt Hotel and conditional use permit at 1550 San Pablo, ZA 2020, 1128 MPA and zoning case number ZA 2020, 1097 MPA. So um, this hotel has already been built, okay? Uh, they're seeking entitlements. Uh, so this was uh, has been on the agenda all year. Uh, previous to our seating in, uh, on May 16th. Um, for some reason, it never came to a vote. It never came to a vote, nobody voted on it. And so the actual hearing, this case has been appealed and the hearing has been delayed until August 17th. So we need a vote for the record. Um, <laughs> So we have the uh, case file on our um, website uh, for the whole, just uh, the zoning city planning uh, letter of determination. I think it's from 2020. I'm just gonna say it really quick. So this is the Hyatt Hotel um, across from um, Lincoln Park, across from the lake. Um, let me pull up the file. Da, 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 da. Okay, October 29th, 2020. 
Where's it? Okay, this is the uh, zoning changes. But they're seeking conditional use permits to, to serve alcohol at the hotel and then at a, uh, okay, here it is. Uh, pursuant to LAMC, okay, so they've approved these things. And so this is what the appeal is about. They approved uh, a, mass, a master plan approval to allow the sale and dispensing of a full line of alcoholic beverages for on site consumption with live entertainment in conjunction with a proposed 200 guest room hotel with an 18,400 square foot ground floor, ground floor lobby, restaurant, bar, conference room, and outdoor pool area. Um, so, yeah. The appeal appeals the environmental uh, review. It's a, it's not. It's, yeah, it, it appeals the environmental uh, findings. Um, the zoning administrator says that like um, they're going to mitigate the noise. They're going to mitigate a lot of things. Um, I don't know if you can pull up this file. People are concerned with uh, yeah noise. Uh, the concentration of alcoholic license within the area, um, the privatization of uh, public assets, the proximity to a uh, public park, which is actually something with the alcohol license that's, uh, you think, whatever, contest. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. They're trying to authorize the sale and dispensing a full line of alcohol beverages. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. blah. Mixed use hotel. Um, we've dealt with this like for the past two years. So, so the the, the mo I mean the the bill itself, or I guess the letter we're going to send out is a letter of opposition against the project. We're actually voting on the project. This is to, a, to oppose it as written. To yeah, this will be to oppose. This is just a general vote on the actual um, item of the, the, pl the pluck item. Okay, so it, it's a, it, it is a letter of opposition against it. Okay. It's written. Well, you know, what they're, what they're asking for the, uh, the, the uh, amendments to the original agreement with the alcohol and liquor, and they're asking for more of it, right? Plus the pool? Um, no, I mean, like this is, what I'm showing right now is the original um, case file and determination letter by the East LA Planning Commission. This was appealed by uh, Eastside Leeds and SCIU. So the thing that you look, the thing that the case file that I have on there is what was appealed. Um, the thing that we're doing, we've already written a community impact statement in support of the appeal, but we've never voted on this uh, pluck item. Okay. See, I was under the impression that this there had been an action on this and there wasn't. So there were only letters of approval, unsanctioned letters of approval written by the previous pluck chair that are now being um, struck from the council file. So we need on record our position on this project. Okay, so and to make, to make the motion right now, we would have to oppose it since the original was to support it. We're opposing this one. So I would make the motion to um, oppose the project and then the council file. If you can repeat the council file. The council file no, it's not council file. This is the actual, um, this is just the city planning zoning zoning case file. Okay, the, uh, give us the zoning case file for it. It's ZA, there are two, so there are two cases. These are two okay. entitlements. ZA 2020, 1128 MPA as in, MPA math, MPA, whatever. Uh, and ZA 2020-1097 MPA. Okay, remember, I, I just wanna remind the board members, this, this motion is to oppose the project uh, on the case file from planning that Sarah just uh, read off. And I apologize, because I don't have it in front of me. Um, is there a second? Second. Oh, second. Okay, Richard Ortiz seconds. Um, is there a board member comment? Um, yeah, have, just. Oh, oh one sorry. second. Hold on, we have the Deanna. Yeah, so 
to saying I means that you agree with opposing the project, right? Yeah, to support the document as motioned right now is to oppose the project and its request. So if we say yes, it opposes the project, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure we're clear on that one. A yes, a yes vote is to oppose the USC project. And a no vote is to support it. I know it's a little backwards, but when we use the word opposition in the motion, it usually means, you know, a yes would support the opposition. Uh, Deanna, is, is that all? Because I know you disappeared off my screen. Oh, yeah, I just needed that clarification. Sorry. Okay, no, that's good. That's what's here. Uh, Fernanda? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say um, USC has historically had a, a remarkably negative impact to our East LA communities. Uh, not only did they illegally perform hysterectomies on our women of color in the 80s, who haven't received settlement, by the way, um, but they are responsible for a lot of the displacement happening here in Lincoln Heights, whether they admit it or not. Uh, so no, I do not support any USC project. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. And then um, Armida. So I want to be clear, we are, we are agreeing to something that is already in place. We are trying to negate what has happened. What exactly are we voting on? This is a uh, voting on the, it's, it's the entitlements for the project, the two entitlements being con conditional use permits for alcohol. The place is built, but they don't have the uh, alcohol license. And the hearing for these permits is August 17. Correct. It hasn't happened yet. Well, the hearing for the appeal is August 17. City city uh, city council hearing. Uh, city council plum hearing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So just just for the record, this is like Sarah said. It's, it's for the two items that they're requesting the meeting, their next hearing, which everyone's welcome to attend and also encouraged to give their own opposition uh, away from the board, right? You can give your own personal public opposition against it. But the board right now and the motion in front of us is to uh, for the board to take a, uh, a non-supporting stance for USC's project. And that's the motion we have before uh, before us. I have one question. Sarah? Um, so um, we've already written a community impact statement that's on file with the council, council file with CFMS for this appeal. Therefore, we can have an, an emissary speak for a couple minutes at the Plum Committee hearing. That's an old item but we never appointed an emissary because we had written it kind of far in advance. I'm just wondering if that needs to be an item on this agenda or can we just, you know what I mean? Do we have to wait till the next meeting to appoint an emissary to speak at that meeting if it's August 17th? No, once, once, the, once this is, if, if approved, uh -huh. um, that any, any person usually from the planning and land use, but we don't have anything on our records that picks the speaker. Um, anyone can go and represent for the five minutes that's allotted on city planning. So once this approved, the person can go and actually speak at the hearing on behalf of the council on their official position on the project. Okay, okay. Um, I saw Diego's hand, but he put it back down. Uh, oh. Lena, Lena, I think joined us again. She might have dropped, I think. Okay, I'll bring her in. Thank you. Okay, I don't see no more. Um, oh, hold on, Benny. Yeah, Judge. So, uh, just to be clear, a yes, yes is a vote is opposes the project. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank, th thank you, because I I do plan on voting yes. I am against the project. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Okay, I don't I don't see any more uh, board member comment. We can go to the public. If you're in the public and you wish to make a comment, you can do so by pushing star nine. 
or using the little hand icon. And we got one. Conrado Guerrero, can you please state your name once unmuted? Hello? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Conrado Guerrero. I'm a resident of District 7. And so, do, uh, as, the, as the neighborhood council, do you guys have the power to negate the liquor license for this? Or is this just, are they going to circumvent this council and get it done anyway? We, we encourage that if there's a liquor license being brought up to bring it to the council, we can't take up the issue and have uh, ABC and the city planning come and attend our meeting so that we can bring more awareness to the issue, including right. in our district of seven. Right. So this is definitely a place that we can bring and help organize and get more attention on the item. Yeah. I mean, just because the proximity to the park, I mean, there's a high school on the other side of the street. I mean, all this stuff are, are variables that, that, you know, there's no, there's no need for it to be in that area and stuff. Right. So, uh, but I did see that uh, CD14 approved as in favor of this. So I don't know how looking at the document, it showed that they had um, supported this, this request by, by USC. So yeah. I don't know what's going on with that, but I mean, obviously they're, it doesn't affect them because it's not in their district and stuff, but I, I don't know why they would reach out to them. For sure. I, you know, I'll, Sarah. Yeah. It is CD14 actually. Lincoln Heights is, South of uh, Main Street, it's okay. pretty much. But right. also the file that I attached is the uh, case file, the determin determination letter from the East LA Planning Commission. So that was like the original like go for it letter. Then it was appealed by SEIU, the, uh, the union, and then uh, Eastside Leeds. So that is the hearing that's coming up. So that they're appealing these uh, alcohol licenses. So, um, Basically, like what we're voting on is for two entitlements. They've already built the hotel, but the entitlements are just for the alcohol. So um, we're just stating a position for the record um, so that we can speak at the meeting, but then also we've already have a community impact statement uh, in support of the appeal. So uh, we'll just have like, it's just for the record, our whole position here. That's just kind of been all over the place. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. I understand, great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys are in opposing this. So thank you. Conrad, just one more question. The liquor license that he's talking about, is it the USC or is this a different total license? It's, uh, I'm assuming it's for the Hyatt, it's for them to be able to serve alcohol at the Hyatt Hotel, correct? Okay. Yeah, definitely. That, that's, that's exactly that's, what we're voting on right now. Yeah, yeah. so that we're, we're making sure that they don't, we're opposing that from happening right. for the obvious reasons of being near a park. Uh, people leave intoxicated at all hours of the day children a school up the street from there i mean a park behind there's two parks uh one on the akasar side and the one on valley so either way they leave it's still going to be a hazard to anybody if right. it's an intoxic intoxicated person there so. and, and maybe what we can do in our land use meetings that are going to start happening is maybe we can uh, uh sarah we should have an update on it once we get this letter out and then uh Juan Raul, you're more than welcome to join our land use committee and get some updates. And if you have any neighbors or anybody that's interested in it, share the link with them and then we can have a more better discussion in our committee. Definitely. Um, who would I reach out to with my email information or you guys have it? Uh, guys Sarah? Have yeah, just email me. Um, it's Sarah, S-A-R-A. Do you have a pen? Hold yeah, that sound, that sound always means, hold on. I don't have a pen yet. I so make that sound a lot. Uh, Sarah dot. Yeah, so it's S A R A, no H. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, dot L H N C at protonmail, P R O T O N mail dot com. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, email me. Thank you for your comment, Conrado. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, next, a board member. I can't say the name. Didia. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to chop it up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chantam. Didia. I just <clears throat> wanted to clarify, as I understand it, what 
we are voting potentially in opposition of is a 20,000 foot basement space at a newly built Hyatt Hotel adjacent the USC Medical Center campus that is also adjacent a high school, adjacent Lincoln Park, and practically on the site of a major medical center. And in that 20,000 square foot space, they would wish to hold live events up till two o'clock in the morning and serve alcohol until two o'clock in the morning. So I don't think this is an ordinary hotel sending me up to my room with a glass of wine this is a live event center of 20,000 square feet that is in the dormitory area of the hospital and med school complex. Near that building, they have built um, condos and dorm rooms for their students. And, and, and because med students are, are post-baccalaureate, they're over 21, but they're still young people um, going to medical school. And of course we have patients and their families coming in and out of that area all the time. So they are proposing to put a significant, we don't have a live event center and a, and, and a major facility like this in that area. And they're proposing to put one that is adjacent, a medical center, a high school, and one of the largest parks in our area. So I just wanted to clarify, I think that's what we're uh, voting in opposition to. Thank you, Judy. Okay, uh, board, do we have anybody, we'll close board member comment and then open it up to the public. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak? You can use star nine or raise the hand. David Galvez. Great, thank you so much. David Galvez, I'm actually here representing USC. I've uh, been a longtime community member, uh, formerly of Lincoln Heights uh, and El Sereno, but grew up in Boyle Heights. Just wanted to talk to some aspects of this project. First of all, um, as was mentioned, it's already been built. Um, we're, re we're requesting a liquor license for two different venues. One is the Hyatt Hotel and one is the USC Conference Center. The purpose of both would be to serve alcohol to patients who, actually not to patients, but to, to hotel guests who stay there. And the second would be to allow us to hold uh, events there for not only groups, but also for medical groups that are coming in to host things. We've been meeting with uh, Eastside Leeds and other groups to talk about some, some um, mitigations that can be accomplished. And I do have to say, this is not a party hotel. This is a hotel where, where folks who are coming in to visit their family members who are receiving medical care, where they can just, you know, have a beer by the hotel, they can have a beer in their room, and they can have a beer in one of the restaurants. That's the goal of this. In terms of noise mitigations, what we're looking at is when amplified noise is being played in the indoor areas adjoining windows, all windows and doors will be closed. Also, and there's a few other ones, but the other one I want to point out is that the sale of alcohol for on-site consumption only will end at midnight. So there will be no on-site consumption or no sale of alcohol after that point in time. Um, and the last thing I would say, there were some other issues I just want to point out. Um, we have... Uh, we currently have 30% local hiring on site where we've been able to hire 30% of the folks who are working on site are from the surrounding areas. Um, these are living wage, job, living, living wage union jobs. They're, most of them are through hotel employees, restaurant employees. And we also um, just wanna point out that, um, you know, there was a mention of us being involved in some of the forced sterilization issues that occurred years ago. The university didn't even have a, a, a department at that time uh, when, in the 70s when this occurred. So we were not involved. I know I've talked to Sarah about this a little bit. Um, if you, you want to find out more information on the, the forced sterilization, um, the people to talk to would be County USC and we'd be happy to make that connection. However, I do want to point out again, this hotel is built. We're looking at mitigations. We have been meeting with the advocates. Um, and I, as I pointed out, some of the big ones are the sale of alcohol for on-site consumption ends at midnight. Um, and we'd be more than willing to hear other mitigations, number one. And if anybody wants to tour the facility, you don't have to come through us. You're welcome to come by and, and check out the hotel on your own. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I don't see any more public comment. Uh, Fernanda, can we take the vote? I will now um, take vote. And again, a yes is opposing the project. Sarah? Yes. Ben?
Ben? I don't see Ben online. Oh, yeah, there he is. Okay, no, uh, I'll vote in favor of it. Myself, yes. Chente? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Diana? Yes. Annalie? Yes. Melanie? <clears throat> yes. Vicente? Right there. Armida? No. Victor? Abstain. Diego? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Yes. Steve? Yes. Lena? Yes. Lena? Melina? Yes. Ben? Lydia? Yes. Thank you. That's 14 yeses, one abstain, and two no's. One abstain, two no. All right, so um, motion carries, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we oppose, Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council opposes the uh, two entitlements for the USC uh, Hyatt project. Um, let's see. Uh, and we're at uh, the end of our agenda here. Um, um, Melanie had her hand up. I think she has a question. I just want to see what it is. Should we open no. it up to public and, and board member comments just one more time? For adjourn. Well, we can't because we already. Well, we can open it, but it, we can't make a decision. We can just listen. Right. Just. Uh, okay. Give, so let let me, know, we kind of have to open it up to the public for a little, you know, comment too, right? Let me open. Uh, Mel, Melanie. Just wanted to clarify. Uh, we had two no's. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, okay. I, I feel like I only heard one, but there was two. So there yes, was two. Ben and Armida. And oh, I get it. Okay. Okay. Ben saying in oh. favor of the project, not of the. Oh, so right. ben, do you want to clarify? Were you in favor of the alcohol permits at the Hyatt or no? But did he vote yes? Or no, because he said in favor, but I didn't know if it was in favor of. I don't know if Ben's here anymore. He said in favor of the project, so he was. Okay, so he's saying yes. You or, got okay, it. Yes. No. Okay, and he's then. Uh, okay, and one abstain. Okay, and then fourteen yeses. Word? Thank you. Sorry. Does that mean Ben was a yes or a no? <laughs> he said no. He he's a no. Well, where is Ben? Ben, hello. Hello. Hi, Ben. Can you hear us, Ben? Watts, are you there? I'm calling you from the desert. Ben. All right. Well, I mean, he's. Yes. Like, so you're in. Mine is a yes vote. So a you're, yes in favor, vote. you're in favor for the alcohol, the entitlements at the um, USC Hyatt Hotel project, right? Is that what I'm in favor, in favor of a yes vote on the motion. Oh, okay. Okay, so he, yeah, he's opposing. Melanie was right. There's only one no. Okay, I got that's you. That's 15 yeses, one no, one abstain. Thank you, Melanie, and thank you, Fernie, for clearing it up. All right. My okay. pleasure. The, the, the panel, uh, let me see, Armida. Are we allowed to vote on two things at the same time? We shouldn't have been voted on two separate things. No, they're all on the same item on uh, planning and land use. They only have one, they have two council files. 
And those are those are both those council files lead. I mean, excuse me, planning zoning uh, codes. They both lead to the to those both two items that we voted on. Exactly, you just clarified two items. So why are we using one vote for two items? Um, the, city, the, city, the city planning put put both items under one zoning code. Let me clarify. I'm the pluck chair. So uh, this is actually from the old pluck. The last pluck agenda are made up from maybe. Maybe you were at that meeting. It was when Richard was chair, and this was the uh, language used on the listing for the item. So these are two entitlements, but it's one item. So uh, with city planning and the city, both of these items are listed under one master case file. So they're the same project. Okay. I don't see anyone else. We can motion, uh, we're done with the agenda, Sarah? Yes, sorry, I keep walking away. My okay, turn. so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Second. Man, I didn't there hear some, everyone jumped out of their seat on that second. All in favor, just say aye. 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 All, those, all those opposed? I don't hear anybody. This meeting, this meeting has ended and i want to thank everyone for attending public and board members it is adjourned. and this is straight from the desert of Pahrump, nevada now it's time for me to travel to vegas now so i'll see you guys all home soon yeah Bring get back a souvenir bye, bye. Hey bye everyone bye everyone